I will be talking about something that has been misconceived by our nation. And it is not the breakup of Jadine. Mining. The clicker is not working. Mining. When you hear that word, what comes into your head? I'm assuming some of you may be reminded of this movie, the Disney classic, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. The dwarves were miners. And of course, right now, we don't use pickaxes anymore and shovels, and we don't sing hi-ho. We don't do that. <laughs> what about responsible mining? Have you heard of this term? Is this just an oxymoron where two words have opposite meanings? Or is this really possible? Let's define mining first. Mining is extracting minerals and other materials from the Earth or any other planet in the universe to be used by humankind and civilization. Nowadays, particularly in the Philippines, many have a negative connotation when it comes to mining. We don't like hearing that term. It sounds negative. But we may fail to realize that a lot of things in this world now come from mining. The mining industry has a saying, if you cannot grow it, you have to mine it. In this hall, in this hotel, in your homes, the gadgets that you are holding, the buildings everywhere, they're all built because of materials that come from mining. The world now relies so much on mining, we, ha we would have no electricity if it weren't for mining. Coal is actually one of the major sources of energy that we have, not only in the Philippines, but, only in the, but also in the world. But of course, we don't want too much coal because it's bad for the environment. That's why we are shifting towards renewable energy. But if you think about it, the things that we use to harness the renewable energy, the windmills, the solar panels, the turbines, and even the batteries to store that energy, are still materials that has to be mined. If you look at forecasts done globally, you will see that our dependence for minerals that are going to be mined will just increase in the next few years. According to a study also by the Minerals Education Coalition, for every second, there are four people being born. And for every person being born, they will use up a lot of minerals, maybe around 3 million pounds or 1,400 metric tons. That's a lot of minerals in their lifetime. Imagine that. So how is mining done now? Well, we have two main methods of mining. We have surface and underground mines. When you think about mining, you might be thinking about underground mines because this, these are the ones done in caves. But worldwide, Majority of the mines are actually surface mines because minerals are just beneath our feet. I know what you're thinking when you're seeing these kinds of pictures. Oh no, they removed the forests and the trees. But th that is true. However, that's not the complete story because one of the most important stages in mining is also the one that is least known by many people, and that is rehabilitation. Rehabilitation is the stage when life is brought back to a mine. And in some cases, a mining site may be repurposed for something else. Mining is also temporary land use. Walang forever sa mining. There is no forever in mining. Once you've gotten all the minerals that you need for that time, you will have to rehabilitate that area already. So again, rehabilitation is the last phase. Now, in the next set of pictures, you will see the Philippine arena. I would compare that to a mining project. Look at the photo above. That's when the Philippine arena, one of the biggest structures in the whole country, 
was being made. It doesn't look beautiful at all. It's the same as when we are extracting minerals from underneath our feet. We won't appreciate um, these things until they are finished. And a mine is not finished until you have rehabilitated an area. The next question is, when do we start thinking about rehabilitation? You actually think about it even before you start digging up. Our current mining uh, laws in the Philippines, as well as all around the world, it dictates that before any mining project starts, you have to ask permission from the government, and the government will approve that mining project. Now let's look at some of the examples of rehabilitated mines. This one is in Palawan. This is the Rio Tuba mine. So what once was barren hills of soil and rock has been fully rehabilitated. The forest has gone back, if you would see. And I have friends who work there. They personally told me that there are already animals back there. Unless they're imagining things, but I hope that it's not. Another example is the Felix Bulawan Mine, or Sipal, in Sipalay, Negros Occidental. You see that lake that wasn't there before. That lake was before, uh, uh, I mean, was a mining site before, particularly a tailings pond. Now there are a lot of fishes and ducks and uh, biodiversity living in that area. So my point here is we have to think ahead when it comes to mining. People also in the mining industry would think years, even decades ahead. We also have what we call progressive and uh, or concur concurrent sorry, rehabilitation. What that means is that even though the mining site is not yet done, you can already do rehabilitation in some parts. And that's the good news about what's happening right now in the country. This is progressive rehabilitation at a mining site, also in Palawan. If you walk a few hundred meters away from this mining site, you will see that there is a forest. And that forest was not the original forest. That's the brought back forest after rehabilitation. Now, some people blame mining also for the deforestation in our country. But how much mining is really being done in the country? If you would see in the next set of photos, you will see our map of the Philippines. Next. Okay, no, the previous one there. Thank you. So you can see, actually you cannot see the red dots in this map because the map or the footprint of mining in the country is very small. You couldn't even see how much mining is being done. But there are faint, tiny dots there, red dots. And that black, black dot there is Quezon City. It's bigger. It's however a fact that deforestation has happened all around the country in the past decades at an extreme rate. And that's due to logging activities, both legal and illegal, as well as urbanization. But what has mining done in respect to that? You might be surprised that mining ha actually helped in reforestation activities. In fact, in, uh, as of 2016, there are 70 million trees planted by mining companies, large-scale mining companies, all around the country. And as we speak, they are doing more reforestation activities. This number continues to increase. Some people also say that mining contributes very little to the Philippine economy, but it's not the whole story. Sorry, Robin. What do you think is the number one product of the Philippines in terms of exports. Some of you, I'm thinking what you're thinking. Maybe you're thinking about agricultural products like rice or bananas or mangoes or pineapples. It's actually electronics. The blue one. 
surprised. You might be also surprised that mining products has a large chunk among our exported products, the ones that are in circle. However, one thing to think about is that many of these minerals are exported in their raw form because our value chain or the way or the process of where things go from where you mined it is incomplete. We don't have a lot of processing facilities in the country. We also don't have a lot of manufacturing capabilities in the country. So we have to export those minerals. But wouldn't it be nice if all of these steps would happen in the country, wherein we create more jobs, and then we can harvest the rocks or the minerals, and then we can transform them into products immediately like phones or cars or buildings, etc. We have to rely so much on other countries for that. If you look at the local situation as well, mining accounts for a large chunk of the activities in local areas, particularly in Mimaropa and Caraga. The green pie, the green chunk of the pie is mining, mining activities. So. If you remove that from those regions, a lot of people are going to lose their jobs. A lot of people are going to be um, sad, basically. And then, did you also know another fact that the Philippines has been the top exporter of nickel ore in 2017? Nickel is used in so many things. Nickel is just one of the major minerals in the world. We use them in automobiles, uh, building steel your phones, even the spoon and fork that you, eat, you use when you eat. A lot of construction projects are also happening all around the world. Lots of bridges, lots of buildings, lots of houses. Build, build, build. The local counterpart of, the, of this things happening in the country. Where do you think they get all of these materials? The gravel, the cement, the steel. Of course, it's due to mining. Now, some, of, some people, again, like this, like Robin here, he says, mining does not help local communities, and that's actually untrue. If you would see, mining companies or large-scale mining companies will, will actually help the communities that they are uh, working in. This here is just a map of all the riches of the Philippines. It's estimated that we have $1 trillion worth of minerals that are still underneath our feet. If we could use that to benefit the people, wouldn't it be better? So here in the photo, these are not rallyists. They are people who love the mining companies who are in their area because these mining companies here, in their case, they help them fish. The mining companies would give them boats and help them in their um, fishing activities. They would train them. Some also would help in the biodiversity conservation, like coral reef building, replanting of bakawan or mangroves in forests, and a lot more things. The next set of photos would show you a state-of-the-art computer lab. And would you believe this is found in a far-flung area? Their computers are IMAX, all of them. This is because their community is found in a mining community. The mining, com the mining company would also fund the education of the children living in their communities. Aside from that, of course, they would also host a lot of livelihood activities for the farmers, for the agriculture activities, agricultural activities in their area. Because they know, as I've said earlier, walang forever sa mining, there's no forever in mining, so they know that they would have to leave one day and they would leave livelihood opportunities for these people, which includes agriculture, of course. And mining companies would also build, literally, the roads, to these far-flung areas and mountainous areas, and they would build houses also for the communities, which many of the people there work for the mines themselves. 
And finally, mining communities also help during disasters or times of calamities. Since I've said that mining activities are done in far-flung and mountainous areas, they are not reached immediately when there's a landslide or when there's a, an accident happening. Mining companies have trained workers. They are trained in first aid, in rescue missions, and relief operations. In many cases, they are actually the first responders. So now when you think about it, mining may, may not be inherently bad. It's the way we do mining, responsible mining again. I would like to reiterate again that our country is one of the most mineralized countries on earth. We are very lucky, we are very blessed, our country is very rich. And I hope uh, responsible mining is done everywhere in this country and in the world. Because nowadays, as I mentioned earlier, the numbers and letters have shown that not all the minerals that we get from the earth benefits us. I hope one day this, these minerals would get to benefit us by having them processed in this country by our people and for products for our people as well. Not only this generation, not only you, the young generations, but also the future generations to come. The benefits that we would get from mining will only be realized if we do responsible mining. I keep on saying that, but I will reiterate, responsible mining is when you do not forget about the environment, when you do not forget about the people, and you do not forget about the economic prospects or activities that are being done for these. One day, I hope, our country will rise. Thank you.